Right, now what we're looking at here is two different lines. One of them is the 80 pound Jarvis Walker uh, Hercules braid line. It's a synthetic plastic braid. The other line is came with the Mudcat reel. It's the material line that's normally used for bow fishing. And as you can see, that's the white line and it's much heavier and larger. So once that gets full of water and it gets wet, both sinks, or even if it's not considered the signal line, it is much, much heavier. So it can take away the uh, the punch in 65, 70 pounds and bring that down to 35, 40 with a very heavy trajectory, a very large curve to fire 30, 40 meters. Right, the, the yellow line, you can see it's much thinner. That itself does effectively uh, get as much as 60 meters but that's when you start to get very severe you start to use very severe uh, trajectory a very huge arc in firing the arrow and it's really much better suited to up to 40 meters which is the main idea behind standing up to five meters on rocks to see through the ocean glare because you in boat rock bow fishing you only get to stand in one position and there are not many of them and you need to cover as much distance as accurately as possible and like I said this is because the laws in Australia about prohibit uh, the sport itself because most of it like just like the short 50 foot line which is only 14 meters of line inside Australia is really designed by the United States and a large number of other countries as a product that does for them because they can go to any river they like fish in any me method they want um, and they'll always be doing that within 10 meters of the fish in Australia you will be probably 20 meters from the fish unless something that occurred to me down on the south coast occurred which is the school of Benito about 70 centimeters long came past but that was the only thing for three hours from the one position was uh, these fish had come along in a school that was actually quite lucky you know it's what will be there but that's what it's limited to you won't go along the river banks looking for fish and seeing them you know I've seen trout many many times uh, when fishing on the side of Lake Eucumbine but the trouble with that uh, happens to be that well obviously they're never doing that so it's only in salt water because it's classified as spear fishing in Australia and uh, it's uh, spear fishing where the regulations really don't apply much to it other than where you do that um, all because you, you can't load a compound bow underwater it's not what they're designed for spear guns are loaded underwater they're not a category M or uh, in fact heavier uh, version license they're not really a pistol grip weapon that's they, they, they're held by two hands and the, the load is held by the person you don't preload it uh, it's all manually controlled so never mind that we'll, what we're about here is the mudcat reel is only about forty dollars and the line comes with it but the, the Hercules braid there's only about twenty bucks it's 115 meters of 80 pounds so you've got something to play the fish with and some of those fish could be quite big in salt water yeah what the there are a few little issues with the mudcat reel and it's only because you don't really need a retriever anyway these will fire quite successfully as far as your eyes will ever see without binoculars because when you go to fire you won't be using any type of visual aid um, they're not particularly practical on a compound bow I couldn't say you couldn't put a scape on a compound bow but they're not particularly practical that's all they get, they get in the way a little bit they're a bit difficult to transport um, so it's up to your accuracy and at least one pin sight to understand where that arrow will go and being sure that you tune the arrow rest and the, the knock setting point on the bowstring. What the point about the reel is though is uh, it's a bit strange on how it goes together. The actual reel itself of course is a product so it only comes with specific things. This reel is the one that's guilty of sitting up against the knee of the spider compound that I have and uh, that particular trouble it has is a bit annoying because the stud that's on that is only uh, around about 15, uh, not even that, 12 centimetres long at the most 
the stud that's on the other one with the Jarvis Walker, the other one that I bought, it's about 20 centimetres long. So there's something strange going on there. Now that's what you need is a shifting spanner. Um, that particular piece here is a clip on the side of the reel, this little metal bit sitting underneath the, the line, just sticking out there. That is for clipping the line back and I don't give it two cents for holding onto the line except for the, the material bow fishing line which is much heavier. Like I said in Australia we can't do that. Uh, we can't stand 10 metres from a fish unless we go to South Australia which for most of us, uh, the main bulk of the population or at least 50% of them is something like about a thousand kilometres and that's a heck of a lot of money to do nothing much because it's not considered a, a delicacy of a fish in any great particular terms. Um, it is actually a pest species and the only reason they allow it hunted is because it uh, has killed out the native species inside the Murray. Uh, but what we need to do with this of course is remove the, uh, the line but there are some points. Right, like I said, you can see the 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 bolt uh, the bolt and the nut there. You get three nuts. You get these two nuts at the back, and these two nuts. Uh, that one fastens against the uh, stabilizer and the bow, the stabilizer hole in the bow, to hold the the uh, reel in place. This holds the backing, this back plate of the reel. That one holds the front so that the two pieces are wedged together. It's a very simple thing. The trouble is what you need to do is take them apart and use super glue on the thread. So when you slot these into place correctly you also put super glue in behind where these two meet where the plate and the actual real drum meet. So you super glue those together. That's another point. And you super glue this one when you've tightened it also. Right, it's got the uh, the special anti-slip washer there behind it. It really shouldn't. You should super glue all of that. And this one here is the only one you allow to spin freely and that uh, anti-slip washer should be behind this. That's how you put that together. These are for holding the arrow. They're very simple. You just break them out of there. They, they're sort of uh, plastic rubber so they're very nice for the point uh, of being easy to to build the reel so that there's sort of four pieces of plastic which are these two the backing plate the front plate and there's a clip already installed on it to hold your line in place while you're not using it and uh, that's about all there is you see you can put that straight back in if you understand how to do that will hold that quite nice it'll hold on quite nicely now, that's what the problem about Mudcat Reel is. So you tighten that down uh, to your, your stabiliser. That's about how much. Uh, if you can get that much onto it, that's great. Right, but it should be at least 15 centimetres to 20 centimetres, the, uh, the stud bolt here. Completely threaded all the way along. And that's in standard American engineering. That's the, the type of thread to ask for in a hardware store. So you cut a, a piece of stud that fits gently into the, uh, the riser hole. Uh, it's also a coarse thread, which is something I can see other people may or may not know threads. Whitworth, Metric, SAE, Standard, uh, Standard American Engineering, which is effectively Imperial. So that's all there is to know about this device here. But you put 115 metres of the uh, the Hercules braid uh, onto the uh, the line, and you remove the bow fishing line in Australia. There. That's how you do that.